Okay, what we're going to go through now is I'm going to show you an example of how similar the journal entries are in a notes payable from the borrower to the creditor. Okay, so for the people who owe the, you owe the money to and the people who are expecting to get the money. The journal entries are basically mirrors of one another. So if you have the journal entries for one side, you pretty much have the journal entries for the other side as well. There's some small differences, but if you have one side, the other side will help you uh, get to the reverse entries. So let's look at the scenario. I'm going to be doing a lot of flipping back and forth here. On May 1st, Bowdoin Company, who is the borrower, like that BB, <laughs> purchased merchandise on account from Coker uh, for $10,000, terms 210 net 30. The merchandise cost Coker $7,500. Okay, so let's look at Bowdoin's journal entries. What they did is they got merchandise. Oops, that's not what I wanted. They got merchandise. Okay, so actually, you know what? Let me make this Bowdoin side here. And we'll make this Coker side. We're going to draw a line between them. Alright, not a very straight line, but a straight line nonetheless. One more. There we go. Okay, so when Bowdoin is buying merchandise, its journal entry is going to be to a debit to inventory. And the amount of, what was it, $10,000? might be off by zero. And a credit to accounts payable in the amount of $10,000. On Coker's side of things, when they make the sale, they've got a little bit of a different journal entry. If you remember back to Chapter 5, when you sell something, your debit is going to be to account receivable, the amount, $10,000, and your credit is going to be to sales revenue. And if you remember, we have a two-part entry here when we make a sale. Oops. Okay. The other part of the entry is a debit to cost of goods sold in the amount of $7,500, which is the amount the merchandise is worth, and a credit to inventory for $7,500. Okay. So that is our sales entry and our entry where we're recording the purchase of the inventory. Okay. So moving right along here. Okay. Okay, I've deleted the solutions that would normally be on this slide because I want to work through it with you. So, okay, so here it is. It's May 31st, and Bowdoin Company issued a 60 day 12% note for $10,000 to Coker Company on account. So, what happened here is we shifted an accounts payable to being a notes payable because maybe we didn't have the money to pay the bill within 30 days, whatever the case may be. We have an agreement that I'm going to pay, or that we are going to pay this 60 day note at 12% for the in settlement of the $10,000. Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're going to convert an accounts payable into being a notes payable, which we just did before. So, our, oops, that's not what I want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same journal entry, did, entry we just did before. We're going to debit our accounts payable oops, for $10,000 and we're going to credit our notes payable account for $10,000. And on Coker's side of things, what they're going to do is they're going to take their receivable and they're going to create a notes receivable now. So we got a notes receivable in the amount of $10,000, and they're going to take that out of accounts receivable because they're no longer they're shifting the categories the same as we're shifting the categories to $10,000. Okay, there's my credit. So that's that piece of it. Now let's say we're going to pay it. Okay, let's say that the period of time has passed and let's go to the PowerPoint to show you how that works. Let's say the period of time has passed. It's July 31st, we, or July 30th rather, and we owe the money. Not only do we owe the money, but we also know, owe the interest on the note. Okay, so it was a 60 day note at 12%. So you've got your principal of 10,000 times the interest rate of 12% and it was 60 days, so 60 over 360. Why they don't use 365, I don't know. I guess it just makes it easier for calculations. I prefer to think of it as 212, so it makes, my, it makes it easier for my brain. All right, so what we're looking at is we're looking at interest of $200. All right, 10,000 times 12% times 2 twelfths or 60 over 360 is going to give you uh, $200 worth of interest. Okay, so with that, let's get back to the journal entry piece of it. Well, now we're going to pay off that notes payable. Ugh, again with this. We're going to pay off that note payable. So we're going to debit the notes payable for $10,000. 
we're going to have interest expense of $200. And the cash we actually have to pay out is going to be $10,200, the interest plus the principal. On Coker's side of things, they're going to get the, that cash of $10,200. They're actually going to, whereas you paid, it, well, Bowdoin paid interest expense, what they're going to collect, they're going to record that $200 is interest revenue, 200 And they are going to take the note receivable off the books because they have now collected the money from Bowdoin. All right, so you can see that these entries are incredibly similar to one another. They're basically reverse entries. Um, they're mirrored entries of the, of the other accounts. All right, Bowdoin Coker have very similar entries, though really one major difference is right here with its two-part journal entry for Coker. Okay, now now that we've gone through the, really the more co complicated way of a way notes payable arises, you know, from the switching of an accounts payable to a notes payable, let's get to the more simple version. And the more simple version of an accounts pay, or rather a note payable arising, is simply to borrow money. Let's say that instead of paying for inventory or shifting the accounts payable to notes payable. We just borrowed money. We borrowed money from First National Bank. And we borrow $4,000, 90, day, 90 days, for 90 days at a 15% interest rate. Okay, so the sim same as we talked about before, the day that you're actually going to get the money and begin this whole $4,000 loan, you're simply going to record a debit to cash and a credit to notes payable. You don't worry about the interest rate, not initially with the first journal entries. You're just getting the cash, you're recording the notes payable or the liability of that $4,000. But when you pay it out, let's say it's 90 days later, so the interest is going to be calculated as $4,000 at 90 days, so 90 over 360, or you know, 3 twelfths if you prefer to look at it from a month perspective, times 15%. And that's going to calculate out to $150. The journal entry is the same. You've got a, as we've discussed for the other ones, it's a debit to notes payable for the principal, a debit to interest expense for 150, and it's credit to cash for the interest plus the principal amount on that note. Okay, so the note can arise also from just a flat out cash transaction. All right, let's move along to payroll. Payroll is very sensitive. Okay, because what's going to happen if there's a payroll error? The first thing that's going to happen is somebody's going to raise their hand and go, "Hey, hey, hey, you didn't pay me right." Right, so. Employees are sensitive to payroll errors, so with that, there there aren't that many errors because people are constantly looking at their paychecks. Um, payroll is also important because of employee morale. If you got paid consistently wrong from pay period to pay period, the last thing that's going to do is make you happy with your company. You're going to say, oh, these rotten people are terrible to work for, so it's going to destroy your morale if payroll is not being paid timely and accurately. Payroll is subject to a lot of federal and state regulations, as you would expect, and payroll and payroll taxes are quite a large expense of any business. Okay, just a little bit of terminology here. All right, most people um, have worked for, well, not most people, many people professionally tend to work for a salary amount. And a salary amount means basically you make a certain amount of money that's stated as an annual amount. Okay, so any professional business tends to we work this way. Um, whether you make thirty thousand dollars a year or eighty thousand dollars a year, that's referred to as a salary when you're stating your amount that you're going to earn in an annual figure. Wages, on the other hand, tend to be more for um, your lower level employees or service type of employees, in the sense of that you make a certain amount per hour. So as you work, you earn a certain wage. Whether it's $8 an hour or $15 an hour, that's usually what's called wages. Okay. Now wages, in the state of New Jersey, anything being paid more than, if any time you work more than 40 hours, you're required to be paid some sort of overtime pay. Okay, if you're an hourly employee. Um, just a little side note, if you happen to be working for a Canadian company, it's 37 and a half hours, so you actually make overtime a little bit faster if you work for a Canadian-based company. But anyway, all right, so looking at this scenario, uh, I think most of you guys because it, it will understand this because at some point or another, most people have worked for an hourly wage. All right, so here we go. This John McGrath is employed by McDermott Supply Company at the rate of $34 an hour plus one and a half, to, so time and a half, plus 1.5 times the normal hourly rate for hours over 40 hours per week. So what's going to happen here is this person is going to make $34 an hour, and for anything over 40 hours a week, they're going to make 34 times 1.5, or $51 an hour. 
So for the first 40, this person worked 40, 42 hours. So for the first 40 hours they worked, they made $34 an hour. That equates to $1,306. And the overtime rate, they worked two hours over the 40, so at $2 an hour at $51 an hour. So they made $102. So their earnings are $1,462. Now for anybody that has ever been able to have the opportunity to work overtime and be paid this way, overtime money overtime money uh, accumulates quickly <laughs> and it's definitely a nice way to get paid and a nice surprise, and you're not even surprised, but a nice thing to have in your paycheck.